My name is Taylor Way and I teach sixth grade math at Bonaire Middle School. I've used applied math in my classroom this year to kind of tie in the instruction into my curriculum. I've used it as whole group instruction so that we can kind of talk as a whole and pick apart the question so that my students are better able to understand what the question is asking. So far using applied math in the classroom this year and I've just been using it so far for four months and I've seen so much improvement in my students written response. They they're so excited when they get a problem right and know how to explain it. And at the beginning of the year, whenever I would ask them to explain, they weren't really excited about that because they weren't sure how to. And so I've really been able to use the applied math to teach them how to go about writing their explanation, to make sure what to include, and to, to understand these are the things that need to come out of an explanation so that other people know what you're talking about. They've really just grown as writers in math and using math vocabulary and being able to put their thoughts on paper. A lot of students are able to verbally explain what they mean, but when getting it on paper and writing it down, they struggle. This applied math has really helped them to understand how to do that and has really pushed them to get to that point. My students really like the way that the problems are designed and it really helps to push them further in their mathematical knowledge and how to explain and better show their understanding. I really love that the applied math problems are already differentiated for me. I've spent lots of time previous to this year coming up with problems that are differentiated to meet the needs of my lower students and my middle of the road students and my students that need to be pushed further. But this program allows me to take this problem, this activity that's already there, and really use it and foster the learning in my classroom. My kids are at the meeting level. I have a few groups that really need to be pushed further into that enriching content. And then I have a few groups that are probably at the progressing level and need that to get that foundational knowledge before they move on. So I've really been able to differentiate my lessons from these problems. We usually start at the meeting level and I have my students work together to come up with the solution for the meeting. And then whenever I have groups of students or individual students who are struggling with the meeting, I take them back to the progressing and I have them work through that either individually or in a group, kind of depending on what the issue is that day or in that activity. Once they have used the progressing to kind of get them where they need to be at the meeting, we move back to the meeting and try to get that answer and kind of figure out what that solution should be so that we can then move on to the expanding. The expanding problems I've really used in, in a group. My, my students work in small groups of four or five students to really um, learn how to explain and how to investigate a problem and how to go about looking at what's needed, pulling out the important things, writing down what they know, and really using that expanding problem to really help them persevere in pushing through those problems. When I first started using the applied math, I thought the investigative problems were supposed to be a harder problem, but the investigative is just a different approach to look at a problem. So sometimes, yes, that investigative is a little bit harder, but I'm really using the investigative to help my students analyze other work so that they can see, this is a common misconception. This is easy to do, but let's see why it's wrong. Let's look at this person's work and see, okay, what can we fix from this? Or look at the correct problem and figure out okay, why did they do this correctly? What can I learn from it in my explanation of this type of problem? Before the applied math, I've had a hard time finding problems that will address all the mathematical practice standards. I really like that the investigative allows my students to do all of those things in one problem. So they're really able to analyze someone else's work and then determine what needs to be happening from this incorrect problem? How do we make it right? How do we explain this? And so it's really been a great tool for me to use in the classroom to not have to create a ton of stuff so that my kids are still getting what they need. My students really love the, the tools on the applied math, especially when they're using the iPads. They love to use technology in the classroom and having the different tools so that they can either type their answer or audio record their answers 
or draw out their work and, and draw a number line or show the, that they've solved the equation correctly. It's really helped them to be more engaged. It's really raised the level of engagement in the classroom because they're able to use what they like and what they do best to show their learning and to show me what they're doing. The real-time grading and review has been an awesome tool for me as a teacher to use because I'm able to use my personal iPad and look and see, okay, this particular kid or this particular group, they're going in the right direction, but they really need to add some more. So with that real-time grading, I'm able to go to that group and say, hey guys, this looks really great, but you forgot to add the equation or for you, you forgot to add your explanation. So let's go back in and do that. So I've really been able to use that in class to push them further. I've also used it to um, show student work on the smart board and the kids really love to see each other's work. With the real-time review, whenever I'm able to put it on the smart board, they're able to see, oh wait, I did that too, so maybe I need to go back and fix my answer. So it's a positive thing for me as the teacher and for them as the students.